What's up, YouTube? Just gonna do a quick, what I hope will be a quick video here, but knowing the way I do things, probably turned out to be a pretty long video, actually, of a recent turbo that I played on Party Poker. Um, I had originally done live commentary while I was playing the hand, or playing the tournament, but I absolutely suck at live commentary, so I decided to just go ahead and uh, do the video through the replayer here instead. I think it'll turn out a lot better. So anyways, uh, it's a micro limit, hyper turbo, 10 man. These things are definitely a dong fest. Um, I just started playing them because the rake recently dropped on party poker by 10%. So they're actually pretty profitable again uh, before they dropped the rake. It was just crazy 30% rake. Definitely not uh, going to be able to sustain a win rate, a positive win rate that would make it worth grinding them out. So I had been playing cash games since I came to party poker, but definitely like my sit and go. So when they dropped the rake, it was definitely a great opportunity for me to jump back into them. And so let's get us started with a video here. So the one thing that can be said about these micro limit sit and goes is they're very, very profitable. Players are super, super bad here. They have no idea what fold equity is or any of the other key elements that you need to be a successful sit and go player. They really are just a mishmash of, you get the odd good player, but overall the play is really, really bad. And so that's why I love these. I mean, it's so easy to grind out a profit here without really having to do anything fancy. And so anyways, first hand here, queen jack off. And I think I played this hand pretty badly, actually. Folds around to this guy who just limps. And really, I probably should have just raised here, but I didn't. And so then we hit the flop, and I probably could have bet it out there. Really not sure. But all I know is I played the hand pretty badly there. So anyways, next hand, 410 aught suited. I'm definitely folding here. Really early stages, what you want to be doing is conserving your stack so that when you get into the later stages, you've got some fold equity. So that when you enter that um, stage of the sit and go when it's a four or five handed and it's a shove fold situation that you're going to actually be able to get some folds. And uh, so that you definitely want to be playing tighter range of hands. Um, now these are hyper turbos, so you don't want to be playing too tight because you're not going to have a lot of opportunity to sit and wait for a great hand. You're going to have to widen your range a bit, but not to the point where you're playing, you know, ridiculous hands like seven deuce off and crap like that. You want to be somewhat selective here. So that hand done over with onto the next one. Ace five offsuit, late position, that many limpers. I'm just going to go ahead and fold it. Even when I hit the flop with an ace, this many people in. More often than not, you're seeing people limp with reggae aces. So even when you hit the flop, you're going to be behind. So I like to just lay them down. This is exactly what I mean by being selective. It's a decent hand, but not a great hand. So it's an easy fold here. Now this is crazy, this hand. Because this guy right here, this Julia, watch out for her. You know, you got these two guys in front of her going crazy. And then you got um, all the action complete here. And the guy was slow playing his aces. Not the kind of thing you want to be doing. Just get it all in or play aggressively. I hate seeing people slow play aces like that. It's such poor play. Reason being, when you let that many people see the flop, especially so cheap, you're just inviting for inviting people into the pot to, you know, potentially hit their draw and take you out. So anyways, just don't sl slow play aces. There's a time and a place for it, but 
Not this, not like that anyways. So anyways, next hand here. I don't think this one's very interesting. Speaking of never slow playing, I wouldn't say never slow play, but you know, you see so many people slow playing all the time with monster hands, and it's just terrible the way they do. And then you know, the first thing they do after they get busted out is they go on the forums and they whine about how poker is rigged and you know they can't believe that this guy donk runner runner them or any other bullshit excuse they come up with in reality if they looked back at the hand and how they played it they'd see that it's their own downfall for losing in the first place you know playing a board like this this guy's got king 10 i wish i could show it oh yeah i guess i can there we go it's got king 10 it's got top two pair but that's a dirty board and so he just calls here, trying to slow play, letting this guy get any draws that he has for cheap, letting him control the hand when in reality he should have been the one raising, just shipping it in, top two pair, don't slow play on a, on a board like that. There's a time and a place for a slow play. And on a wet board like that, that's definitely not the kind of board you want to be slow playing. So anyways, next hand here deuce nine off i'm just gonna fold it again here jump ahead a couple hands later nothing happened jack seven off in the big blind and he min raises sure i could have just limped and called but again a marginal hand i'm just gonna fold it let these two battle it out and wait for a better spot as i'm not really gonna be hitting a lot of boards with a hand like that so these two go at it, and next hand. A couple hands later, I get deuce deuce. I don't like to play small pocket pairs like this, especially with the position I'm in. I'm in mid position. I like to play probably 6-6 six, six plus here, so I go ahead and fold it. It's a matter of preference. You'll see a lot of people shoving any pocket pair or playing any pocket pair but again this early i'm going to be a lot more selective i just fold smaller pocket pairs weak aces things like that i don't want to be mixing it up and taking any risks here okay so a couple hands later we're now basically at the point where we are playing shove fold poker i've got king six off i'm going to be a lot wider now that the blinds are so big in, rel in relation to the stacks I shove it, I get a full next hand. Ace King suited, great hand for me. Again, I shove it and I get called. And this is a great spot here. I understand the call. You know, the guy's in the big blind. He's got like a fourth of his stack in already. Definitely an easy call for him, easy shove for me, pretty standard. I'm ahead by a lot. Pre flop. Actually, let's go back here. And I end up winning the race and crippling him and doubling up here. At this stage here, as you can see, pretty much everyone's going to be shoved fold. There isn't a single person at the table that has more than 10 blinds. So really, you don't want to be raising even minimum here because you're going to be com committing probably around a fourth of your stack just on a raise. And then if someone comes over the top and shoves, which... With any decent hand they should be you're going to be in a put, put in a spot where you're going to have to decide if you want to fold or call that's not the spot you want to be in so you got a decent hand just ship it be done with it so anyways i got queen six definitely not a hand i'm going to be playing out here this guy's so short he just shoves gets a two calls goes to the flop here and this guy obviously top pair top kicker Pushes him out next hand. <clears throat> Jack 8, definitely not calling here. Just gonna let the hand play it out. Probably a bad fold on this guy's part. He's got a, four, a third of his stack in already. You're gonna be calling pretty wide since so much of your stack is in. And you've got basically 
the correct odds to call. You're getting almost two to one to call, first of all. And second of all, with a third or a fourth year stack in, he basically should be playing really, really wide here. So anyways, next hand. I don't know why I min-raised here. I figured since it's such a... The players here are so bad. They're going to be folding. And anyone that shoves here, minus maybe this guy, I'm probably going to be calling if they shove over top. Uh, again, the shoving ranges are really, really wide at this spot. So I'm going to be ahead of a lot of what people are going to be shoving with here. And not behind by a lot on it, if they do have a good hand. So, I don't know. I probably should have just shoved there. In retrospect, probably bad play. But anyways. Again, with just a min raise. I don't know why I was doing this. I think there I was just trying to induce a shove over top. Obviously calling anything that... A, a, any shove from pretty much anyone there. So, you know, I guess sometimes there is a good and a bad time to be pulling moves like that where you just been raised um but basically the only time you want to be pulling a move like that is when you want to be inducing a shove over top anyway so don't be doing it with trash hands like queen four but more marginal hands even stronger hands but don't do it with like pocket aces don't do it too often because you're gonna just be announcing that you're most people will see a move like that in strength so you know it, it really you got to be conservative with a move like that. So 9-8 off, I probably could have just shoved there and been done with it. Um, the guy's probably going to be calling virtually any two cards there. Since he's got a third of his stack in, I probably should have just shoved and been done with it. We're basically going to be a flip. And I am getting pretty good odds to call, but I didn't. I decided to fold it. Just skipping through a few hands here. And so, like, see, that's what I mean. Like, you see... A few times now, people have been in the small blind where they had the perfect opportunity to shove. When it's folded around to you and it's blind versus blind, you're small blind, you can shove a very wide range of hands uh, because the, the range of hands that they're going to need to call your shove with is going to be tighter than the range of hands that you can shove with. So you're, in an, you're at an advantage where you can shove pretty wide, knowing that they're going to be folding quite a lot. And so yeah, I mean, this guy right there gives me a free walk. And again, same spot. I, I just went ahead and folded it again. I probably could have shoved, but it's such a marginal hand. I'd rather just conserve my, my stack. Pocket jacks, easy shove. I get called by ace nine and shitty that he catches his ace on the turn, but then I hit the jack on the river and turn the tables back around and I resuck out. Um, I definitely had him. I was ahead probably about 65, 35 when we got it in decent call by him, I think, but you know, my hand holds next hand. And so now we're four-handed. This is where things really get crazy. Blinds are going around so fast now, and they're so big, that you really, at this point, don't have any opportunity to really sit down. If you're in one of the blinds, if you're in the small blind or in the cutoff, rather, uh, you're going to be shoving in, shoving it in really, really wide, hoping that you're going to get some fold. This is where fold equity really, really becomes important. Um, if you only have, like in this guy's spot here, 2,000 chips, you're not going to be getting a lot of folds here because, like, as you can see here, you know, with only 2,000 chips, 
and the big blind sitting on 800. They only have to call another 1,200 into a pot of around 2,000, 4,000, sorry. And so, obviously, you know, 2 to 1 odds are going to be able to call pretty, pretty widely there. So, definitely this guy's at a disadvantage since he's got such a small stack here. This hand plays out. They both check it down. Terrible. I get absolutely nothing here. And... I mean, in this spot here, it's a couple of hands later, on E7 suited, he shoves 2,000 chips, only 1,200 more to call into a 4,200 chip pot. Two to one odds, basically even money to call. Even if I'm dominated due to ICM, it's definitely a good call. I'm calling very, very wide here. Not every single hand, like 6-2 off, I'm going to obviously fold. But suited connectors, virtually any pocket pair. Any ace, any king, any queen, any jack, really. Any 10 almost. I'm going to be calling really, really wide here. So, we get it in the middle. And he hits his card on the turn. And whatever. Can't look back at the hand. I think I played it great. Fold this one out here. King seven suited off. Probably could have shoved here, but whatever, fold it. And again, I get another walk from this guy. Like from what I'm seeing here, these two guys here are really, really passive. They're not gonna be raising all in unless they've got a pretty decent hand. So I can use that inf information to adjust accordingly. I can kind of tighten up my calling range a little, especially since they're virtually even in stacks with me here. So definitely want to be paying attention so that you can get information like this. At East 10 suited, I folded. Had there just been one shove, I probably would have called, but with a shove and a call, I'm just going to go ahead and let it go because the chances that one of these two is going to bust out is pretty good. Uh, increases my equity in the prize pool by just letting them battle it out and folding. I can serve my chips and I bump up ICM wise as well. So then we hit four handed. And, uh, I mean, this is a good example here. He's calling super, super wide. I probably still would have made this call. It's kind of sketchy marginal, but whatever. Not a horrible call, I don't think. Given the amount of equity he increases in if the guy that shoved folds or gets busted up, busted out rather, And so, I mean, I'm in a bad spot here now. I'm the short stack. I really got to open up my range here. I got lucky. Instant call, obviously. And I hold. Oh no, we chop. It's just terrible. But could have been worse. Could have hit one of his cards and I would have been out. So I shove, instant call. Again, not a horrible call. I mean, he's got a third of his stack in already. Equity goes up quite a bit once another player gets knocked up, knocked out here, knocked up. So uh, yeah, not a horrible call, but whatever. I end up taking the pot and again, another terrible hand and shove and call. So now we're heads up, and I think this is the last hand here. No, I fold this one. Oh yeah, we play a couple hands actually. I totally get lucky here. Unbelievable. But 
I mean, with a quarter of my stack, and I probably could have folded it, but realistically, I mean, if we go back here, next hand, I'm going to be in the big blind here, so I'm going to have 1,200, I'm going to have like 4,800 left, and I'm going to be having to call pretty wide again, so I'd rather just shove and be done with it. And I got lucky. And this hand is sketchy. This is where my computer screwed up mid recording. And uh, I don't know what happened here. I guess he just folded. And yeah, running fives. And it's done. So basically, with a little luck, I was able to pull off a win. Um, I think there was a couple of spots where I definitely probably could have shoved and um, missed those spots, but whatever. I mean, overall, I don't think I played pretty, I, I don't think I played terribly bad. The secret to these really is early stage, you want to be playing tighter. Let all the other players kind of smash, smash each other out. Get a feel for how the, how the other players work i um, kind of get a feel for what the ranges are going to be so that mid-stage you've got a decent stack because you've been playing tighter and you can play according to their tendencies you know you'll know who you can open up against wider who you have to watch out for who you can call down lighter and um, again really hands down the most important factor of these is maintaining your chip stack so that when you get to the later stages you've got full equity um, thank you very much for watching the video. I plan on putting out some more soon, as time permits. And in the meantime, check out my website, legdonkey.com, link below.